Hello, people. Hello, sim racers. Can you hear me? Let's see if we have some people here. Obviously, I've messed up my uh, initial link. I just stopped the uh, the streaming, which I mean, it's normal, right? Should have happened. I don't even know if you can uh, hear me right now. Hello, people. Oh yeah, we have also echo here from my control. Okay, so let's see the first chats if uh, anybody can uh, can hear me and see. Oh, I'm way too loud. That's good. That's good. Let's uh, lower a little bit that thing. So, how about this? So, how do you hear me now? Okay, it's the first time, so we have to work a little bit about it and see if you guys can hear me well if uh, i have problems if the streaming quality is good if the sound level is good so bear with me have some patience i'm an old guy sorry a vintage guy so need to learn a little bit of, the, of that stuff right so um how is it going now is it any better right then while we read yeah, so as you know, guys, we just released uh, version 1.2, actually 1.2.1 .1 hotfix today. And uh, we have a tiny little bit of uh, change log. We didn't do many things, so, you know, lazy devs is all I can say, courtesy of David Debrivio, our colleague. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's how it is. Um, let me make it distorting. Well, it's all I have, so maybe I can lower it a little bit more, but I don't know then if you can hear me. Let's see how is this going. All right. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do today. Well, first of all, we will try and see if everything works properly. <laughs> uh, secondly, uh, we have some uh, big changes in the physics. Uh, I would like to show you uh, a couple of things, not everything, because we don't have all the time. So I will have to talk about. Uh, I would like to talk about the um, Sassis Flex, of course. Some little changes in the aerodynamics, which uh, they are not really game changing, but uh, I would like to show them. So if you feel them, you know it's not placebo, and it's something pretty interesting, and I think it's pretty pretty nice to have. And then I will just uh, talk you a little bit about the brake pads uh, simulation that we have now and the brake disc uh, consumption where. So hi everybody. Uh, I see people you know joining on the on the chat. Uh, I won't show you everything that happens in the brakes because we're gonna need uh, at least one hour of driving just for the brakes. Maybe we could do this into another stream because I tend to do more than you know just this one stream. Okay, so let's move on. Let's see if you guys can uh, look the changes that uh, I do on the uh, webcam. Uh, and if you can see uh, the cars and everything. Okay, let's go here and start working a little bit. So, what I want to do, I would like to show you Sassis Flex to start with. So, I will uh, go into branch cuts and I will choose one car from 2018. Uh, by the way, did you notice, guys, we have a brand new um, uh, showroom here, car selections, everything. It has customization, it's uh, pretty cool. Uh, I'm sure that you have already seen many uh, streamers and YouTubers uh, posting about that. So I will, I will choose the Jaguar. This is an amazing car, it's from 2018. Uh, massive engine, uh, much development from the uh, Emil Frey uh, team, which unfortunately is no more present into the 2019 season. But it is a great car uh, and I really enjoy to drive it. It's a very particular car, you really have to work with it. So yeah, so what, what we're gonna do? Uh, practice, um, Brad Schatz, as I said, and normal conditions, nothing strange. So let's go into it. 
OK. Uh, by the way, let me know now if uh, the sound levels are correct, uh, if you guys uh, have a, a decent uh, quality. I know that the stream visual quality is not so good, but you know, that is what it is for everybody, so we have to deal with it. Right, so uh, aggressive setup. Let's have a look at the uh, wheel rates. As you can see, it's middle to soft, nothing too uh, spectacular. Uh, so get, let's go out from here and uh, drive. I'm gonna need. I mean, we are going to drive it. Uh, you know, I I'm not an alien. We're not going to do amazing lap times. I really want to show you. Yeah. Ooh. Let's see if I can manage to get out of the pits first. <laughs> All right. So uh, I really want to show you some stuff. Let me know if the uh, sound engine is good or if it's too loud. I will lower it a little bit for me because. So first things first, I have to you know heat up a little bit the tires. So first lap is going to be a little bit messy, but I'm going to do, a, I believe, at least two or three laps and see where we are at it and talk you through it while we do it. So, whoops, a little bit of understeer here. I don't, I, don't have the, I don't have globes. I have globes, but I've lost them somewhere at Misano event, so that's all I have now. Yeah, I'm a chippy. I'm, I'm a cheap guy. I don't buy new things. Uh, okay, I'll move the mic a little bit away from my mouth. Right, so you can see already that I'm starting working with the car. Uh, this car, you see, bounces a little bit and uh, also needs some extra work from me to point it where I want. Oh, what a sound, what a sound this thing. I mean, Luca Sodano and Alvio Costandini, they have done such an amazing job with the sound. I mean, look at, listen at, at this thing. Ah, fantastic. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, so here you can hear the car going down, scratching the surface. Uh, the traction control is not perfect on this car, it's not so advanced as some other cars not driving very well right now but I believe in a minute I will have the uh, tires in a better uh, pressure and temperature and we will be able to uh, work a little bit so as you can see I have to work a little bit with a steering wheel because I want to point the car somewhere but it doesn't really go exactly where I want to and especially if I go into the curves like this you can see it jumping around quite a bit yeah here too you see oh whoa <laughs> have to do some pretty fast movements because otherwise yeah we'll, we'll speak about the 720 GT3 in a minute so you know Stay with me and uh, we'll talk about that. Actually, it's going to be the next uh, car that I will be driving. So, yeah. Okay, so, first thing I notice, obviously, I can't show you this, but you can try it yourself, is that if I try to brake too hard and go through the pretty bumpy track of, uh, of uh, Brad Scott's, wow, there, the... Uh, the first feedback gets a little bit lighter because it seems like you know the wheels are jumping around and uh, I don't have so good grip like when I'm whoa, when I'm uh, when I'm braking really really hard and trying to turn it into the into the curve and you can also see on the exit that I have to really work myself out also here on the quite fast uh, right hander and the next one I really have to you know, whoa, whoa. Did, you, did you see that? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that is pretty impressive. 
say that. Again, I mean, you, you have to, to work a little bit on this car, you know? Yeah, don't look at my, uh, you know, safety ratings and everything. Keep in mind, guys, that I really have to walk and crash the cars every time. So if we need to do tests with Kevin on his servers, then he usually just, you know, gives me whatever rating and that's it. That's why I'm not going online anymore, but maybe we'll arrive to that too. Okay, so here I have to turn around this car a little bit on the, on the accelerator. Well, in 25 slow, it's not that bad, but you can see that I had to walk my uh, my car my my car a lot. I need to give many steering inputs. You see, I have to play with the, uh, with the with the pedals. So yeah, the car is nice. It's uh, you know it's a fun car. Whoa. Oh, there, there you are, there you are. Lost it, lost it. All right. So it's a fun car. It's nice to drive. It's got a great engine, but the the chassis and the aerodynamics actually the aerodynamics are not that bad. But the chassis doesn't really respond as as I'd like to, right? So let's see what we're gonna do now. Okay. So I'll go in and the pits. All right. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, we're gonna have a look at the uh, at the setup right now. Okay. Actually, no. I will. I will explain you something. We're gonna leave this into the, the replay so that you can see the lap from the outside and in the meantime I'm gonna show you something okay let's see if this works for you guys so I have here one very famous car I don't know exactly his name but I think you know it so what it, what we're simulating now <laughs> uh, with uh, with Sussex Flex is this kind of thing I don't know if you can see it right we simulate this kind of thing, okay? So, you have a very stiff suspension, right? And normally you get a bump and the suspension have to give in and absorb the bump, right? But, you have a very stiff suspension. So, when you are on, 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 on a turn, the suspension is already pretty well, you know, um, compressed. And... Uh, it doesn't have too much uh, range of movement. So until now, if you get a bump, it would absorb a little bit, then everything would be, you know, infinite, infinitely rigid, and the whole car would jump around. Now with Sussex Flex, the suspension is already, you know, uh, compressed. You get a bump or a curb or something like this, and the suspension absorbs a little bit, and then the chassis do, does this. You know, obviously I'm exaggerating here, but it does this, which means um, it, it does, you know, it does absorb better. But it also it's not precise anymore because it means that your suspension points and your suspension geometry move around. Obviously, we're talking millimeters, but millimeters in suspension geometry are very, very important. So, um, all right, yeah, now let's get the, uh, the mic a little bit farther away. Maybe I can uh, lower it a little bit more. Let me know how you feel about this now, if that's okay. Please let me know if you still hear me or if you have problems. Right, and um, as I was saying, Oops. You can uh, you can see the car, you know. Um, it was drivable, but at some situations it was nervous, twitchy. It wouldn't go exactly where I wanted. It wasn't very precise. So okay, you say this is a bumpy uh, circuit. So 
let's go into the garage, right? And take our setup and just do, you know, um, let's let's do a test. So two clicks, three clicks down, softer everything, all right? One, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, it pays to maintain the same uh, uh, proportion of, of wheel rates, but we're just trying, you know, to see if uh, if it works. Two more, two more. This is going to be very soft now, but the circuit is bumpy. Rule of thumb says if the circuit is bumpy, then you know you have to make your your um, suspension even uh, even softer, right? Well, no, this is old kind of thinking it's uh, old uh, how to say um, all the rules of thumb that we everybody read in old books and uh, you know it's it's for old cars not much aerodynamics they didn't even understand very well all the handling dynamics so anyway let's see so I can feel the car is softer already, but you can see I still have to work because it's not so precise. Okay. Oh, lots of lots of understeer here, lots of understeer, and this is because the suspension doesn't control very well the whole body anymore. Let's see here on the fast turn. Ooh! Also had... So it's softer, right, and uh, it doesn't bounce as much. But it also gets out of shape. You see, either in understeer or in oversteer if I go on the, on the accelerator. You see how it moves around a lot. So, okay, that doesn't really work. So let's do, you know, what what you should do in uh, in all those high. Oh, did you see how the car twitches? And lots, lots, lots of traction control. Really, really bad. Oh, that's it. Okay, so let's let's just abort this lap. Let's go in. Get on this setup, aggressive setup again. And this time we'll go up. We will make the car much stiffer. So one, two. <coughs> Sorry. Six. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you, you can notice it's not like I'm exaggerating, you know. I'm just, you know, going stiffer. I'm not going full stiff. Just, you know, making the car stiffer. Let's go back out. Do another lap. All right. Let's see. Let's gain again. All right. Okay, guys. If you guys are listening, everything is fine by me. So uh, let me stop here for a moment. Go back. Uh, okay. Let me lower the uh, the gain. I'll put it to. Oops. No, the microphone. Sorry, the microphone. Let's put it to seventy. Seventy should be good. Okay, and let's go back. Yeah, let's see. I've put the uh, rear a different value. All right, yeah. Okay, got it correct this time. Let me know if the microphone is better that this time. All right. Okay, so now we have a pretty good stiff car. Usually GT3 cars like to be a bit stiffer, so let's see what's happening. Alright. Obviously I will need to, you know, 
have my tarsal to beat. Bring them up to temperature, wow! And pressure. So I can already see that I have better grip than before. Oh cool, I'm happy that the MiG is better. Sorry again guys, I mean, we'll have to do some testing here in practice. Okay then. So now the car is, you know, you, you can see that it reacts better on my steering inputs. I mean, look at the turn in right now. Uh, yeah, if, if I wouldn't have fucked up like that. Oh, sorry. If I wouldn't messed up like that. Uh, but what do you can do? Okay, back in, clean the tires. But you can also see how it jumps on the curves. Okay, let's see. And whoa, that's some sustained oversteer here. So obviously uh, you can say, but Aris, yeah, you, you're too aggressive on the pedals. Yes, I know I'm too aggressive on the pedals. It's not like we are going to, you know, go behind a uh, lap time right now. We're just trying to understand what the car permits us to do. So we are, you know, working on it and see up to what point the car permits us to play with it. Alright, so you see, you see how the traction control keeps entering, and I even have to do I have to counter steer. But on the other on the other side, I do have a much better turn in. You see, less steering wheel input, and the car turns in. So. We did gain a bit more precision and turn in, but the traction is not so good. Oh, that's it. Let's see if we can do something better. And then at some point the car just, you know, slides on four wheels altogether. But it, it does react better than, than before. But here, here's again, I mean, when the car starts sliding, it slides a lot. It's not like, you know, it's a little bit slidey that you can control and turning it around. It just, you know, it just let go. You see, under here, just let go. So either you get it perfect or just goes away from you. We are not that that slower than before. Whoa. All right. You saw that that I had to do some pretty massive steering wheel movements. And I still I'm, I'm slower than before, so it doesn't really pays out as a, as a setup strategy. Yeah, I'm gaining a little bit here, I'm losing into slower turns, so that's the situation. Okay, so let's stop for a minute and let's see. So it, it is evident, I guess, by now that this is a car that doesn't really have a very stiff sizes. It, you can feel it has lots of movements around the curbs, uh, lots of, uh, it's not so precise, you have to work around it, and doing things in this setup changes its behavior, but not its balance. So it's not very sensible to the setup, as you, do, you would expect. Uh, it does some, because we did some pretty big, you know, setup changes. This is something that normal, normally the teams will never do. You know, they will not go from from here to here and the car will remain as it is. You should expect much, much bigger changes. Okay. 
Okay, so what we're gonna do? We're gonna go back to the aggressive setup and think a little bit about it. So the car is it's not so as rigid, you know. It suffers a little bit of sassy's flex, a little bit too much. So going with much stiffer uh, springs, it makes it a little bit more precise, but doesn't really pace a lot because then the car, when it slides, starts you know bouncing around and goes completely away. So doesn't work like that. If you go very low with the wing, with the uh, with the springs, then it's even more more difficult because it bounces a lot. Uh, it it doesn't it isn't precise at all. So you have to find a compromise. So let's start with the original aggressive setup compromise. And here's something we can we can think about. Sassy's flex is undumped. So it's like you have a spring, you know. It's like you have this the sassy that goes like this, and it is a, a, a big spring spring. Okay, but there is no there is no uh, damper to balance out the oscillations and vibrations of this big spring. So to balance out this kind of oscillations, you need to work together with the dumbers of the axial suspension. So when the sasses, you know, when, when the, the suspension gets a hit, it is very well dumped. And so the sasses will go up, will go down, but it would, it would not start a resonance between suspension and sasses. Because otherwise, if you have two low dumpers, it will start, you know, the suspension will go up, the sasses will go up, the suspension will go down because it's not very well dumped, the sasses will go down, and the two things will start to go into resonance, and the bouncing will keep going and going and going, which is something that you don't want to. Um, so, yeah, guys, I will... Uh, I will uh, try to reply some of your questions, but this is pretty, you know, more technical stuff. So let me finish that, and after we finish that, then we can see if we can answer some of your, your questions. So what we're going to do here, we're going to raise it to be the dumping forces, make them stiffer. Okay, so I will go with around uh, six clicks on pretty much every value, front and rear. So 18 here, 16 here, what was that, 21, 21, 16, 18, oops, and 22, all right? Six also here, I'll, I'll go even with eight here, and I will explain you in a minute why. All right. Same here. Sorry for this uh, boring moment of clicking. So why are we giving more uh, dumping at the rear? Uh, because the sassy's flex depends also from the weight distribution and masses in the car. We have a big engine at the front and we have less weight at the rear. Uh, so it's going to flex more at the front normally. But you don't want the rear to be stiffer and have higher um, higher frequency of, of uh, oscillation. Uh, obviously, you're going to ask yourself, how much do I have to stiff it up? I can't give you a correct answer. It's not, you know, I'm sure that, you know, professional engineers might know exactly, but I'm also sure that they also go by the feedback of, of the driver. All right, so... What we did here is that we've kept the original uh, aggressive setup and we've raised a little bit the dampers. It's more stiff now. So the stiffer dampers, as I said, should control better the movements of the suspension and hopefully also they won't, you know, let the sassies resonate with the suspension. Okay? Okay, let's try this. All right. Still some understeer here, but cold tires. Oh. Not too bad for cold tires.
Ah. Right. Ah, you, can, did you see that? I mean, it did bounce, but not so much. Oh, here was almost perfect. And I can put more speed into into the turn. And the the tires are still heating up, so good vibrations on this setup. Did you see the oversteer? I didn't have to work a lot with the steering wheel. I, you know, I just had to counter steer a little bit and keep it there. Yeah. First gear here. Oh, I went a little bit too, too fast in here, but not so bad. Yeah, I'm not driving very well. Let's see if I can do something better. Nope, nope, nope. I'm driving bad. All right. In the meantime, we will heat up the setup, the the tires, and see what we can do. <clears throat> but you see, yeah, it, it's it jumps around a little bit. It's not like you know it became a perfect car. But once the initial bounce is done, then it stops. It doesn't keep oscillating as before. Like before, you were un you were going down the curb and you would do boing, boing, boing two times, right? Or three. Now it just does like boing and that's it. I mean, I'm, I'm driving bad and I'm still close to the lap time, so let's see what I can do. That wasn't very good. Much less uh, traction control intervention. Much more predictable for oversteer. But I'm driving really bad now. Anyway. But it is a better car. I mean, you can see it even at how much steering wheel movements I'm doing. It's not like I'm going crazy as before. Ah, uh, terrible, terrible driving. Come on, Aris. Yeah. And even with this terrible driving, I'm still faster than before, I guess. Or almost. Yeah, I'm faster than before. And I'm really driving badly now. Yeah. Okay, let go the brake. Go in. Oops, a little bit of extra oversteer here, I didn't want to that. You see that it, it jumps, but it doesn't like, you know, completely goes away. Oh, I'm driving so bad. But I think you get the idea, right? Right. I mean, even on this bump here, it's like, I won't say completely smooth, but so much better than before. Yeah, I've gone way too far here. Right, so, okay. Enough of this Jaguar. Let's go and try something more interesting, alright? Right, so, let's go out. So by the way, how, how is it going guys? Did you 
Can you hear everything? Can you look good? Is the quality decent? So let's go to 2019 now. And let's get His Majesty the McLaren 720. How about that? that that's a pretty awesome car, right? Have you seen that we can, you know, now put up the lights and everything? And the indicators, look at that, look at that. That's impressive, right? The graphic artists have done amazing, amazing job. We can even open the, the doors now. <laughs> ah, look at that. Ah, this is amazing. Look, look at this. What a beauty. Yeah. yeah. Great. Okay. So, confirm. And let's get the 720. Let's go again on the same track. Uh, practice. Same as before. And load. All right. So we're gonna get the aggressive setup, and we won't touch it at all. It's already a little bit stiffer than than the Jaguar. You can see that, okay? So the McLaren has a carbon fiber chassis, okay? It should be extremely stiff much much stiffer than whatever the poor Jaguar you know can offer so let, let's see what we can do on this car low stay away from oh we already have low tire right so it's a different car here probably I'm gonna spin right away <laughs> Look at that. This car is amazing. Look how smooth and small steering inputs I have to give and I'm not even I don't I don't even have the uh, the tires in temperature. So you can see how how much more precise this car is depending on the Jaguar. Obviously you're gonna say, but you know, Aris, this this car is more precise anyway. I mean, it has better suspension, it has everything. Yeah, okay, that's true. But you know, stick with me for a minute, and we'll see some extra stuff. Look, look how small. I have to give some very fast steering inputs. All right, whoa, like that, because when it when it goes. It's much more edgy, it's nervous. But, if you keep it, if you, if you know how to drive properly, you know, and you are precise, then it needs much less serious input, it's much smoother to drive, it's much more precise, you can place it wherever you want, you know, it just, just goes in, look, look at this. Almost no traction control intervention. Wow, what a beauty. Uh, it's not so, so much fun car as the Jaguar because when it starts moving around then you really have to be very fast. Okay? It's not a car that you can relax and you know or have fun and uh, drift around. It's much much more uh, agey car it's you, you really have to be concentrated here but look at this goes over the curb bounces once goes down perfect wow look at that Just like that, we're already at 25s without even driving properly. Mm. 
Okay, let's drive a little bit better now and you can see the delta going down. That's a great car. Already half a second down. But it, it does require from you to be, you know, precise and concentrated on what you're doing. It's not a car that you can, you know, just fool around. It will bite you. Yeah, that's it. Ah, oh, that's a great car. Yeah, fantastic car. See, I'm, I'm, I'm barely giving any steering inputs once once I have done a good turn in, I'm not doing any steering, I'm already on 24, okay, so let's stop here, 24.9, it's enough for what we have to do. So, let's go into the garage now. Right, so, we said before that if you have a very stiff chassis, then you probably can, you know, make the suspension even stiffer and gain in precision, because in the end the chassis doesn't give in, and could make your car even even more precise. So let's try this. So let's go really really stiff. So we try this. Three. That's a bit too much, but we can try it. One, two, three. Oh, that's completely <laughs> very very stiff. Maybe we should go one lower. Yeah, maybe we should go one lower. All right. So very very stiff. You see, this is. No, Formula 1 material. I mean, not Formula 1, but single seaters material. Alright, let's try that. No time to show. Stay clear on the curves. Let's go. So what's going to happen? So is it going to do the same thing that the Jaguar did, that it became slidey? and it started to oscillate uh, and have very high frequencies or is it going to be even more precise than before wow so tires are still cold you know look at the turn in look how little have to move around you can see that it bounces but it remains so planted Look at this high speed turn, amazing speed here, Let's see if we can go over the curb, ooh, ooh, did you see that, this time it goes a little bit too bumpy, you know, jumped a little bit, Let's do this lab and see what's what's how the car is going to handle. Oh, so when it when it goes away, it doesn't stop. You know, you have to really stay there and control it. You have to really try hard. But when it doesn't goes away, it's incredible precise. precise. All right. Hi. <laughs> Sorry about that. Unfortunately, the sub wizard that I have here while I'm driving is not updating anymore. So, I don't see what you guys are riding. I will have a look in a minute when I will stop. Boy, does this thing is it's really, really precise.
Alright, let's try and do a decent lap. Not too bad. Oh, this is so precise in here. But then the exit is a little bit too much. You see, oh, when it when it goes, doesn't want to stop anymore. So it's very precise. A good driver will be very good at this, but it does have its issues. Really, you really need to be very fast if you're doing something wrong, you know? Alright, let's do a proper lap now. Uh, very, very bad lap, very much under steering. I don't like it. But you see, when you get it right, the, the delta goes down, which means that if you are really, really precise, then you can, you can gain with a stiffer setup on this car. Uh, I have to be more concentrated, which right now I'm not. But then again, I think it's clear what is happening. So, what is going on here? Right. So let's go back to the garage. So let me also have a uh, a look at uh, what you're doing and what your chat is telling me. And uh, in the meanwhile, I'll let you have a look at the replay of the car. All right. So as I was saying, this car is extremely stiff. When you stiff also the suspensions, the whole thing comes together, becomes extremely precise. It really is like, you know, a sword. You can really point it where you want to go and it will go. But if you're not precise on your driving and you're not concentrated enough and you don't have the, the experience or the, you know, the level of driving technique that it requires, then it starts to sliding, especially on a track like this, which is bumpy, you know, you can see that this this track is really bumpy here so in such kind of tracks it never pays to be extremely stiff on your suspension even if you have a um, a chassis like this but if you go into a different track like for example Pro Ricard or um, even Monza if you're not jumping on the on the curbs uh, Spa is a pretty flat track right that it doesn't have so much undulations and, and uh, bumps, then a car like this with a stiff uh, suspension and a very good and precise um, and a very good uh, aero uh, setup, it can be really, really very fast, really, really fast. That is why the BOP, the official BOP and the one that we use also, uh, makes the car have much less power than a car like the Jaguar for example because they know that if you give them the same power then the McLaren will win everywhere so they have to make it more rigid they have to make it you know uh, less powerful because it gains so much speed inside the turn so it can exit also faster all right so obviously you're gonna say but you know Yes, but those are completely different cars. Completely different cars. 
So what's the point? Right, so let's get a similar car to the Jaguar. Let's get the Mercedes AMG, right? This is it. Let's get uh, this one. Oh, that's so beautiful. Look at that. <laughs> Let me do the, do the usual stuff here. I, I mean, I mean, I always love looking at those cars. Look at the at the job that the artists have done. This is amazing, amazing stuff. Right. Okay. You all know the, the Mercedes. Uh, it is an extremely capable car. Um, it, it practically won 2018 championship. It almost it went very close to 2019 championship to win it, even if it wasn't an Evo car. Uh, so let's go in, and you can see already this is a stiff car. Although you can see that at the back, it doesn't use so stiff uh, suspension. There are many reasons about that. It can be the suspension, the um, how to say, uh, the suspension geometry that doesn't require it. In fact, has uh, lots of anti-squat, which makes the suspension more rigid uh, into its movements. Uh, it is obviously the uh, chassis stiffness at the rear of the car. So many things, and of course it also needs lots of uh, traction because this car has a thunderous V8 normally aspirated with unbelievable amounts of torque. Okay, so let's let's have a go into this car. It's the same kind of car, so front engine, right? Uh, like the Jaguar, big uh, engine at the front, uh, and. Uh, Pretty much the same power, the same characteristics, but much better chassis. So let's see what what how it's uh, it behaves around here. So you saw here it jumped, but it stopped, and it also pretty precise. It has tons of torque, so I have to always be careful, you know, with the power application but uh, it is so much more precise than the Jaguar here look at how less steering effort this car needs for me to maintain the the line that I want to except if I'm doing stupid things like that but still you know even even the counter steer that I had to do it was pretty decent no big deal See, second gear out of the hairpin, no issues at all. A little bit of traction control intervention and that was it. Look at that. Extremely precise car. Over the kerb, uh, I went over the kerb to show you how it reacts and just jumps and stays there. Again here over the top, no issues at all. I mean, it is it is a little bit understeer right now. You can fix that with the setup. I might show you in a minute how you can do this if you want to. But you know, it goes over the curbs. No, no oscillations, no problems at all. See, massive amount of torque. Massive amount of power on this car, and you almost no, have no problems controlling the acceleration outside of the turns. First gear here goes in, a little bit of understeer because it has the big engine in front of it. Fantastic. That's a great car. I mean, no, no doubt that this car won 2018 and was practically winning 2019 up there with the new Evo Lambo and Evo Audis and everything. 
Look how precise I can be on this car. No issues at all over the curbs. Look at that. Second gear out of that narrow turn over the curbs. No problems at all. Yeah, great, great car. Well, 24.5 like nothing. I mean, I wasn't even driving well, so you can see that this is an amazing car. So, there you have it. Uh, this is how the Sassy Flex feels different from car to car, right? Let me let you show you the replay on this. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. Um, and... I know that you guys are expecting from me a list of the cars. I cannot give you the exact numbers, I cannot even give you an exact classification, but it's not so hard to understand. If you take the cars and go into a bumpy track, like, you know, Silverstone is a bumpy track, uh, Brands Hut is a bumpy track, you can go over uh, Hungaroring, which is flat on the surface but has lots of curbs to jump over. And if you go over the bumps and then try in your mind to measure the amount of oscillations the car does once it's, it jumps on a bump or a curb and goes down. Uh, not sure if you, if you saw that, but for example the Jaguar in its normal uh, form, it will go over the, the bump, get the hit, it will do something like one, two, three, or two and a half, something like that, and then get steady and out. With the McLaren, it would be like, boom, and that's it. The uh, Mercedes, again, very stiff, it would go like, boom, boom, and that's it, you know? So, we have the usual suspects, of course. We have the McLaren that have the Cambo sassis, very, very stiff, probably the stiffest of everybody, you know that? Uh, then we have the top cars, because, you know, they're winning. Let's go this, okay? So, uh, Mercedes, uh, Audi, Lamborghini, Ferrari, all of those cars stay there. Probably the Porsche, the new Evo one, is even stiffer than those somewhere between, you know, this group and the McLarens. Very, very stiff chassis too. Uh, and then you go down to cars that are much longer. For example, uh, the new Bentley is a stiff car, but it is very long, so it has issues, you know, it's not like it is very soft, it has lots of sassy flex, but it's not as stiff as the, the Mercedes, for example. Uh, same goes for the Nissan, the new one. And then obviously you have the older cars, like the older Nissan, the older Bentley, long car, long, um, you know, old technology, um, all the weight at the front, nothing at the rear, all this, you know, are important to know. The Jaguar, you saw the effects on the Jaguar, and so on. Another thing that you will notice with that is that when the car is stiff, small changes to the setup will give you quite important handling changes. If the car is soft, you can do changes on the setup and you won't get as important handling changes because you can maybe stiffen the suspension but the chassis still moves around the suspension so again all of that you have to take it into perspective we're still talking about racing cars here you know you, we're not talking about my Miata from 2001 which goes on the bumps on the Italian roads it goes like something like that you know <laughs> it's not like this and, and still, as I told you, it's not like that Sassy's stiffness or Sassy's flexibility is a bad thing always. Uh, modern manufacturers know how to take advantage and make Sassy's stiffness work together with the Sassy's and make the car easier and better to drive for the driver, give, him, give them feedback. And you have probably already saw that uh, in, until this update, you had one kind of feedback with the car and now you are again on the limit, but there's still something extra you can do with your steering wheel and the car now will listen to you. It's not like, okay, I'm on the limit, 
you ask something more, I'm sliding. Now you are on the limit, you ask a tiny bit more and the car will do something more. Obviously, if you do something like this, then nothing will, will happen, of course, or you will slide and go completely wide and, and it works as you expect. But you still have a tiny bit of extra uh, things to, to work with. All right, so, um, oh, we were saying that this car had a little bit of understeer, right? So how you can fix that? Well, before going into massive changes in your, in your setups and everything, this is what you have to do, always. So you just go into the aggressive setup, let alone the mechanical grip, the dampers, the electron, let, let alone everything. Just go safe for aggressive setup. Maybe you can do, uh, you know, um, a little bit of uh, uh, a couple of laps in, into the um, safe setup and a couple of laps into the aggressive setup and see where you feel better with the safe and where you feel better with the, with the aggressive. So let's say that, all right, you decided to do uh, to work on the aggressive setup and you feel a tiny bit of understeer. Here's what you do. If you want to get lots of difference, then play with the front height. One click at a time. So one click here. It will give you a decent or important uh, change in front handling. So you will, so the lower you go, the more front bite you have because the aero works into that way and those cars are extremely sensitive into the uh, aerodynamic wake, rake, sorry, rake. So depending on the angle of the car, how, and, and the ride heads. It's, those cars are extremely sensitive in ride heads, right? So you want to change one or two clicks on the front and you're gonna have a very important uh, variation into handling characteristic. You wanna go to uh, fine tune, then go to the rear because the rear, uh, it has also the rear wing and the rear ride heads, sorry about that, <laughs> so the rear right head, uh, it will again change the handle characteristics, but in a slower way, slower rate of change. So you can, two clicks here are not the same as two clicks here, okay? So, okay, um, let's see what we do. Well, obviously, sorry about that, obviously you'll see, because of the uh, limitations, of the of the rules, you see many cars in the aggressive setup that are already on the minimum right head at the front, so you can't go any lower if you have understeer. Uh, this is typical for this kind of cars, uh, so you have to play with the rear. So if you can't go lower in the front, you have to go higher in the rear. All right, so I won't change the front. I will change. I will give two clicks at the rear, all right, and just go out. That's it. That's all I have to do. Right? So I will do just a couple of laps and see what happens. You see here already cold tires and everything and already went in. And again here. Whoa! Oversteer on the exit. And all I did was two clicks on the rear. Rear right head. That's all you have to do to start. Obviously later you can fine tune everything and go deeper, but first thing you have to do is, you know, just this. Look at that. No understeer at all. Fantastic. And the preset setups that we have in are there to give you great hints on how you have to react, you know, how, what, what you have to, what's the, the direction that you have to take to make the car as you want. So don't start on the preset setups and change everything uh, right away and you know you don't need to make big changes. Just go one, two, three clicks at a time, at a time, on one thing and that's all you need to do. Look at that. Two clicks at the rear, which as I told you, it doesn't give massive handling differences, but it is enough to almost completely eliminate the understeer that I had before. You see, I also had a tiny bit of oversteer there. 
way too hard there. All right. No problem. But yeah, again, right now, lap times are not important. The important is to understand the handling differences and see how the car reacts. Look at that. It goes right in and then over stairs. So here's another thing that I do to, to make the setup. Uh, you have to find out on the track two turns. So the first turn is the one that you die. <laughs> so which is the turn that you have more problems with, all right? I mean, the turn that you can't keep the car, you have issues, you have uh, a terminal oversteer, you're really fighting the car to, to keep it. So you have to find which turn is that. And then you have to find which turn the car is way too safe for you to drive. It gives you bad understeer and so on. And the first thing to do is try and see if you can do something on the setup so, for example, Brad Schatz has this turn here, right? If you have too much oversteer in this turn, the first thing that you have to do is you have to, to survive the, the T1, the first turn. So you have to do changes to the setup to survive the T1. Once you have the T1 safe for you and you can drive over it, then you can start looking at what happens into the rest of, of the... Uh, uh, of uh, of the circuit, okay, and see if you can improve tiny bit, one click at a time, the handling on the rest of the circuit without compromising your safety into that bad corner. So this is a very good rule of thumb because many people ask me, okay, so I have I want to change the setup, but I don't know I don't know where to start. Start from the most uh, important and difficult turn. Make the car easy for you there. Right, make the car easy for you there, and then start working on on the rest of the turns. Because if you cannot make make it through the most difficult turn, then doesn't matter what you do on the other turns. You will always be slow, or you know, risk to to have an accident or spin the car. All right. So, um, okay. I think I think that's enough now for uh, for the sasis and some of the setups issues. Uh, how much time are we doing this? I don't even know. Oh, one hour and... Uh, okay. Uh, do you have any, any specific uh, questions, guys? Do you want something to, to ask me? I have no, no chat, but I can see it here. So, any, any questions on that? Or is it too late for everybody? Let's see. All right. I see nothing uh, particular. So what I'm going to show you is this thing. So let's go away from here. And uh, Oh yeah, uh, raise all the dumpers at the same time. Not really, but it is something you can do. Uh, if you want to, you know, try a different thing uh, in terms of, okay, can I make the body, the whole body of, of, of the car uh, being less oscillating and being more uh, precise. So in that case, if you like the, the balance of the whole car, the, the handling of the car, then you can raise or lower all the numbers altogether. Okay. Okay. Uh, then who else? Uh, Nejjamak, I don't know if I pronounce your nickname uh, correctly, sorry about that. Uh, is there an order for setup changes? What to change first? Yes, there is an order. As I told you, uh, get the safe, do a couple of laps, get the aggressive, do a couple of laps, and try to understand on the most important turn that you have problems if the car is too oversteery or too understeery for you. Okay? If it's too oversteery, go into the ride gates and either lower a little bit, one or two clicks at a time, the rear, or raise one click at a time, the front. Uh, 
uh, if it's oversteery, right? So if it's oversteery, you have to lower the rear two clicks or raise the front one click at a time, okay? If it's understeery, do the opposite. Go into the right heights, lower one click at a time the, the front and raise the rear one, two clicks at a time. This is the first thing that you have to do. Everything else is fine tuning or almost, okay? So start with the aggressive, for example, and everything else, uh, go to the right heights, change the right heights, everything else is fine tuning. Um, another thing that is important, once you are happy with your, with your setup, it means that you have also made lots and lots and lots of uh, driving, you know, so you are also used to the car and to the circuit. Always do this. Once you're happy, save your setup and go back to the aggressive setup and try again. Because many times you're going to be faster or same faster, same as fast as your own custom setup with the aggressive setup. And this is where you can understand that, you know what, it wasn't the setup the issue, it was your driving the issue. Okay, so do this. It's a very good exercise. All right. So, um, another, another uh, question. So, why, what is the difference between the Lambo uh, and the Evo version? And why, when I drive the Lambo, uh, I can drive the Lambo, but the Evo kills me? Okay, so, the old Lambo had a pretty evident problem of understeer, especially power on understeer. Now, the new car uh, has... Uh, revamped aerodynamics, especially the front splitter, and that permits the front end to generate more downforce, especially when you are going on the accelerator and the front end raises up. Even when it raises up, it still produces more downforce than the old car. This means that you have less, um, less understeer on power. But what that also means, if you are a bit too aggressive in your turn in. Okay, so when you're turning in, uh, I'm talking too much. So let me let me switch to this uh, to this kind of uh, <laughs> of graphics. Okay, so when you turn in, if you are too aggressive on your turn in, and the rear end slides a little bit out. Uh, on the old car, when this was happening, you would go on the accelerator, the front end would raise, and it, the, the understeer provoked by this operation would stabilize your car and you could go out. On the Evo car, if you slide a little bit the rear end and you go on the accelerator, the front end will raise, but the new front splitter will still generate enough downforce to keep the front end in line which means the rear end will keep sliding, you know? So you have this nervous situation. Either you catch it with very fast movements and steering input, or either you are more precise in turn in. If you are not precise in turn in, or if you are lazy in your steering inputs, then the car will bite you. And it will bite you probably going, you know, snap, oversteer on the other side, or spin, or generally will not give you that safety feeling that will permit you to, to push. It is a car uh, that it is made for, you know, going even faster. On top of that, because of all these situations, uh, the BOP went hard into it and hit it with even more weight. It really has tons and tons of, of weight. So the car is heavy. It's like, you know, it, it got uh, like 90 kilos of, of extra ballast on some trucks. So it's over one... 100 uh, sorry 1400 kilos without fuel with i mean with the fuel and everything this car goes over 1500 kilos and that's a lot for a racing car you know so that is one of the reasons next question uh did you probably reduce the ferrari engine the ferrari power no i haven't no i haven't i also saw your um forum uh, post asking about that uh, we haven't done anything on the BOP, so rest assured. We did change a little bit the slipstream, and we're still working on it uh, because we have some things to fine tune on that. So maybe in one of the next hot fixes or next update. But the fact is that the slipstream now 
uh, is stronger if you are very close, but a bit less strong if you are far away. So when you go out and you're not in the slipstream of the other car, then you have issues to, to get it, you know. Uh, so that might be. But again, you know, uh, um, Ferrari at Monza, not much you can do. <laughs> that That's the car. Lots of uh, uh, mid-turn uh, speed, but not enough power. Uh, how do you evaluate this, all the Sassy's flex on telemetry? Uh, that's difficult. That's difficult. Uh, you should check a little bit the uh, suspension movement and see if you have different, you know, uh, movements after you get um, uh, some kind of of, uh, uh, of bump or curb. It's not like that you can find the Sassy's flex because it's still very very slow, but if you see that your suspension makes too much, you know, um, oscillations, then you have to do something about it. All right. Um, okay. So uh, what else? What else? Uh, uh, boom, 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 boom. Porsche is pretty stiff. stiff. Uh, English tips, thanks mate, I will have a look at them, but you know, have mercy on me, I'm Greek, I live in Italy and I have to speak English. <laughs> uh, all right, all right, uh, Ferrari poor on braking, I don't think so, Ferrari is pretty awesome in braking. Uh, okay, um, okay, so let's let's do that final thing. Uh, and then we call it a day, I guess, for, for today, except if you have extra, extra questions for me. So let's go to Paul Ricard and let's do a quick race with just a couple of, well, actually one opponent. I don't need anything. One opponent and let's lower this down. I don't want to do any strains. Uh, that's enough. Okay. I like it early in the morning. Uh, this should be good, the Mercedes. Yes, I will show you in a minute the PSA, the pressures, but let's do this first. So the, the pressures, actually, it's it's pretty simple. You have to be in the range of 27 to 28, okay, uh, PSA. So that is all that, that you have to do. So you have to be in uh, one hot, one hot. Uh, so you put your tires with some pressure probably starting from the aggressive setup you have to do a couple of laps at least i would recommend at least four or five laps with a setup that you like okay uh then you go back to your to your uh, uh to your pits and in the last readings you have to check the psa hot here uh the psa hot oh, okay sorry let me change uh, the uh, the image, all right. That should be good. All right. So you have to check the PSI, the pressure hot, which means right after you came back from your uh, labs. Uh, don't do the mistake to do as per usual, you know, um, sim racing nature. So you are into the into your labs and you just finish the last. Uh, turn and you press ask and you go out this is gonna give you bad readings so instead of that do your laps at max go into the last turn move in go into the pits go into your you know the pit lane and stop there okay stop there ask you don't have you know to park on your pit box but at least go a little bit to the pit lane stop there and have a look then at your PSI uh, at your pressures because this is where it will give you a more realistic reading of what the tires are doing uh, in average during the whole lap, the, ho the whole lap, you know. Because when you press ESC right after a turn, then it will give you readings exactly after the turn and they won't be, you know, the average readings. It's, it will be just what is happening on that turn and being very dynamic with what is happening on the tires in Assetto Corsa Competizione, you're going to get strange readings uh, and they, they won't help you. Right, so what you want to do is to stay around 27 to 28 
PSI hot. Okay, so for example, uh, this is readings from from the uh, from the Bratz hats. So it doesn't matter here for for Polycarp. But for example, you have 27.7 here. Let's say that you want, and you have on on the right 27.4. So let's say that you want this star to be identical to the left star. What you have to do is add 3 psi on your cold pressure on the uh, on your right star. So one, two, three, and if you do the the turns again, you will see that you're gonna have the exact identical pressure. So this is the the the, uh, the way to do it. This is how the real teams do it. This is how everybody does it, and um, and you, as I said, you want to stay about 20 to 20 from 27 to 28 for slicks, and from 28 to 30 for wet tires. This is the range, right? Okay. Uh, so what did we do? Okay, so we get the aggressive setup, nothing serious, and. We're gonna start this race, and what I'm gonna do is I will I will try to be very close and on the side of the front car, and I will try to explain to you what I feel so that you know what you might feel and what might happen. So as you know, while the cars are going very very fast, they produce a big wake from the aerodynamics, right? And that doesn't mean that you have less air density at the rear of the car like this, so you go faster. But you have also pressures at the at the sides of the car. Okay, so let me stay close to this car now. By the way, we did some improvements on the AI, but we know that we still have to work, especially with how the overtake. We're still working on that, so you know, stay tuned with us. And we, we will nail it eventually, so have patience and we will make it. Okay, so probably to stay close to this now, I might cut the road just to make sure that I can get his slipstream right from the start. So right now I will cut here and go as close as I can here. Right, so look what's going to happen. I will go into the side here and whoa whoa uh, look look how it drags me in or it pushes me out depending how close I am to his to his uh, side so it is a very subtle very subtle feeling it's not like like whoa like something like this uh, but you're definitely going to feel something on your steering wheel and probably what you're going to experience is that you know you you are like going into the straight and you move just a tiny bit to correct your trajectory and you will feel a bit a tiny bit of extra force and your car will move a little bit more than what you are turning it's it would be like you are getting some big rips of side wing right not big just some side wing and uh, if you are really around um, on, on the back and the side of the car then you will probably get pushed a little bit outwards if you are just on the side and behind the car you might get pushed and sucked in behind the car that's what's going to, to feel so uh, try it be careful don't do it that on the uh, multiplayer servers uh, because it might take you you know uh, in surprise uh, and um, yeah, that, that, that's the whole thing. I, if you like this, guys, I can uh, I can show it to you one one more time. So let's restart this thing and let's uh, let's show it again. Whoops. Okay. How to manage wind in setup? Well, good luck with that. Nobody knows. Uh, it's not it's not an easy thing to do uh, because um, the wind is not fixed you know it's not like 
you always have wind from the left or always have wind from the right. Uh, going around the track, the wind will go around everywhere, so you just have to deal with it. It's, uh, it's difficult. And you have to be very careful, uh, especially uh, especially when you are, you know, having... Uh, oops, let's have this car go through. Oh, have to go get it. Um, you have to, to deal with it, especially when you have it behind you in a braking zone. Or, let me cut through this. Alright, I'm close again. And we'll cut again here, so that we can get closer. Right. Yeah, 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 Gergo, I know. Warring for everything. Alright, we're going even faster, so the effect will be even more... Whoa! More important. You see, <laughs> you see, I was keep, I was keep pushing towards the right, but the car wouldn't really go exactly at the same angle that I would expect it to go. Again, it's it's subtle. It's not like oh, this is exaggerated. Or, Look what I did, or you go try it and oh, I don't feel what what I was saying. I feel nothing. Uh, it, it's really very subtle, uh, but it can't cut you out by surprise, especially when you are, you know, racing and you try to be very close to the other car and trying to get the whole slipstream and stay close. So be careful. Go close behind it, then go out and stay out. Don't stay too, too close uh, to the other car. Especially when you're dealing with much bigger cars than yours. So if you have in front of you a BMW or a Bentley, be careful because the whole aerodynamic simulation is also based on the uh, aerodynamic drag and the front area of the car so this generates more vortices and more uh, problems so this will also have an influence on what you feel so that is all that is all um, brake pads right brake pads I will I will tell you just a couple of things because it's too late about brake pads uh, here's the thing about brake pads so in this setup now, in the strategy, you can select front and rear brakes. You will see that all the default setups have uh, brake pad number two. Uh, what you see here is, uh, <clears throat> sorry about that, is the uh, last reading of the brake pads. Uh, it's the width in millimeters of the pad. And the width again, the, um, uh, the width of the disc again in millimeters. Um, usually, those pads can go down to around 20 millimeters and still have pretty much the same brake pedal feel and modulation. When you go uh, lower than 20 millimeters, then you probably start feeling a different pedal. So, what is going to happen? Uh, let's put it at 4, uh, uh, and I will explain a little bit. Alright, so let's try to do a couple of laps like that. We will lose too much time, but anyway. We'll try to, you know, use the brakes a little bit too much. Just a lap to show you how they, they were out on the last readings. Uh, whoa, where am I going? That teaches me to look on the uh, <laughs> on the road and not on at, at the chat, you know. Terrible driving, but that's okay. So we have four four brake pads available. Uh, my advice is always use the number two. Always use the number two. This is a pad that is very very linear, good modulation, good uh, friction, 
and uh, you can use the number two and still have you know uh, the ABS working which means that the friction of the pad is uh, already too much for for the tire grip so what's the point to have an even more aggressive pad you know uh, pad number one will have a little bit more bite you know uh, faster also but it has to be right on temperature okay and uh, this means that uh, you have to you know be careful at the start of the race or when you are uh, doing your pit stop or if you are driving on long very long race and you go into the night so the temperatures go down you have to be aware of that uh, but uh, brake pad one can easily do sprint races one hour can do also three hour races probably without problems uh, so yeah no no big deal brake pad two can uh, can do much more than three hour races it can do 12 hour races easily and with a little bit of care probably can finish a 24 hour race but we will discuss this in a minute then you're gonna have probably some modulation issues and some uh, heating issues so it pays you know to change it mid-race brake pad 3 is extremely linear great modulation uh, almost no issues with temperatures at all uh, and can can do 24 hours again without problems uh, but it has less bite it has less friction so you will see that your braking distances in you know optimum uh, dry grip uh, they will be a little bit longer so be aware of that uh, instead of using it on dry situations it is very very good to use it in wet situations all right uh, and then we have pad 4 pad 4 is not used in this endurance car it's not like it has better grip than pad 1 it's almost the same almost the same okay what am i doing i don't even know where i am on the track anyway uh, so it doesn't have uh, more uh, friction than pad one uh, it may be a tiny bit yes but it is so difficult to handle the temperatures it has such a short range of uh, temperature um, uh, optimum range that in the end it's not linear to use it is not good for that uh, for this kind of car but I've included it because it wears uh, very fast you know and and that's such oh listen listen to that because i'm overheating the, the the pad you see so listen to the different sound of the brake pads now listen and you hear this is means that this can pads do not work properly anymore so if you hear that and you see overheating something is going bad okay so let's go to the to the garage Actually, let, let me see if they if we have uh... Okay, so we have a tiny bit of consumption here. So you see I'm, I'm breaking a tiny bit look look here at the um, at The throttle brake pedals uh, indicators. So you see that when I'm just touching the brake It doesn't really slow down the car anymore which means that now I have a tiny bit of dead uh, dead zone on the on the brake pedal, right? So this is what is happening when the brake pad or the brake disc gets too consumed, it will overheat because it has less surface to you know dissipate the heat, so it overheats faster, and uh, and it also uh, has a bit of dead zone. So I'm just touching, and I'm not really having. And if you keep going with this kind of uh, of, of very uh, wear down pad, uh, you can even arrive at a situation when you know you have half of pedal with dead zone, and nothing's happened. And then at the rest of the half, you have all the brake uh, force immediately available. This is going to be very very hard to, to to deal with. Also, depending on your brake bias, you might have 
your front uh, brakes uh, wear out first or your rear uh, brakes wear out first and when that happens obviously it will modify your brake bias your brake balance and that's going to be a big a big problem you know because you, you might be um, used to uh, to a certain handling of your car when you just apply a little bit of braking to you know go into a very fast corner like the one at the end of the very long straight here at Porica. and then maybe you wear out first your front brake pads and so your front brake pads start to bite a little bit less than the rear so the brake balance goes back after a lap you go there you touch a little bit the brake you go in the turn and your car snaps into you and you spin so that's going to be really really difficult so keep an eye to feel if you have dead zone on your brake pedal uh, or if your brakes start to overheat it's very very important on very long uh, very long races so current setup let's see what happened here it is you can see that it went down from 29 to 26 uh, here also from 32 to 31 uh, with uh, brake pads 4 I believe that you're gonna you will start experiencing problems after half an hour or 40 minutes of racing big problems so we we've put the number four brake pads in as a demonstration for you guys so that you can have some fun and see how the whole thing works out and have an idea of what you might expect into a long race with the other pads generally don't use them you don't gain anything at all uh, beta testers, uh, even alien beta testers, are practically faster with brake pads too because it is pretty much the same bite as brake pad one, but more linear, you know. Uh, so this is all about the brake pads now. Maybe in uh, next stream we're gonna do a longer uh, race, uh, and you can see the effect of the brake pads when they are really worn out. Um, so okay any questions uh what do you have to do when the ambient track temps are so low that slick tires temps are always in blue nothing you have to deal with it it's that's the way it is um it's i mean if you you guys you have to go and watch into the gt world the youtube channel the official uh, Black Man Series channel. You have to do, watch the 2018, I think, or 2019. 2019 Hungaroring race. They started the race with a wet track, and all the cars, almost all the cars, had slick tires. And uh, there was a BMW M6 with the rain tires. And it started like, I think, eighth or ninth positions, and in uh, like, I don't remember. Um, one lap or two overtook everybody. It was like they, it was passing other cars like they were stopped, you know? Uh, because everybody, it, it wasn't really uh, wet, but it was damp and the temperatures were so low that, you know, the cars with the slick tires couldn't bring the temperature up on, on the tires. So that was it. Um, the, so what what they did was like uh after after i think three or four laps yeah um there was a dry line on the track and the bmw find itself out with the rain tires and they overheat massively and everybody was overtaking it for left and right i mean three wide four wide everybody was overtaking because the in the meantime the dry tires were went up into temperature and they start working while the bmw tires were overheating and there was nothing you can do uh so exactly that it's nothing you can do you know you have you have to deal with it that that's how it is that's how it is all right so uh how to reset padware you don't have to reset it every time you go out uh the the pad uh, resets uh itself so it's not like uh, the uh, limi the uh, tire set limitation. Every every time you go out, the pad is new. Uh, so you know, 
no 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 issues at least for now about that that is how it works uh blah 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 blah, blah. Yeah, uh, it's true that you have to, I mean, even if they called, it pays to have your tires in the correct pressure. I mean, if your tires are overheating or are cold, still try to put them on the correct pressure. Pressure is what gives the tires the correct spring rate and the correct width of the tread and the footprint, you know. Uh, so even if the temperature is not correct, it's always better to have a tire that has as big as possible footprint on the ground, you know, to deal with the loads and the friction and everything. That gives you grip. So even if your tire is very cold, as long as you have the correct pressure, it's better. You know, it's even better than having, you know, a hot tire, perfectly good temperature, but bad pressure. Bad pressure means that your tire is either like that or either like that, and it doesn't have the, the full contact paths that is needed to, to generate grip. Okay, guys, um, that's it, I think, for, for tonight. I hope you, you've enjoyed it. Let me know in your comments. And as they say, the YouTubers, I'm new into this, remember to subscribe and uh, please let me know. Uh, the next days, I might cut some things uh, of the video and post them single ones, small ones, so that you can, uh, uh, you know, have some pills of whatever we discussed uh, today uh, to, to have a go and learn about it. And uh, I might do a poll uh, so that we can decide which day is better. Uh, probably I won't stream again on uh, Wednesday because it's a little bit of a difficult day for me. But, you know, no worries. We'll find a day.